to So this is the first well, this is the first real fall morning I'd say we've had here. Um, I think it was about five degrees Celsius. So that's cold, frost warnings, whatnot last night. But I love this time of year. But anyway, I'm continuing on on the woodshed. So hopefully what I want to get done for this week's video is the lap siding on the front. Um, on both sides of the door and then that'll complete three sides. I don't know if I have enough siding to do the back of the cabin or sorry the back of the woodshed but we'll see get this done get that done and then I'd like to do the upper pieces so my plan for that is I'm going to use I think I'm going to use vertical boards and do board and batten across the top I think that'll look all right so that's my plan today we'll get started and I'm sure it'll warm up here I was saying this is the first morning that really feels like fall and um, I finished this side of the front wall and I was going to move to the other side and sort of show how how I do the lap siding. But anyway, I've got some visitors, which is the first real visit I've got from these birds this year. And people are probably familiar with them. I've talked about them before. They go by different names. Gray Jay, Canada Jay, um, Gorby tends to be what we call them around here. Um, but they're are a familiar friend in the woods, particularly in the fall through the winter. Then they don't go away completely, but you don't tend to see them as much during the summer. Nice to see the gorbies. Um, still fluttering around here grabbing some food but then as I watched them collecting food I noticed a squirrel that was scurrying about the property and um, was climbing up a tree to these things I have called prayer flags which are these good omens that you hang around your home and your property they're from Nepal 
and they're supposed to bring good energy to your property. But anyway, the squirrel was clearly enjoying that as well because he was up um, picking away at one of the ones on the tree and presumably to make a nest for himself for the winter. Uh, hopefully he keeps that nest outside of my buildings. So there's a, when you just sit and they're still, there's so much going on this time of year. All the animals, including the humans, are making preparations for the upcoming winter. And it's nice to watch nature unfold in front of you. Um, but to end the video, what I wanted to do is to show how I installed the lap siding and what I've learned over the course of doing this on a couple buildings, three buildings, I guess. I just wanted to show how I install this lap siding. Um, I don't think anyone's ever shown me how to do it, so I may or may not be right, but this is what I've kind of learned. So the first thing I like to do is put trim around whatever area I'm putting the lap siding on. For tools, I would have a hammer, some nails, a level. I think that's it. And then what I do, so I just take my first piece, put it in. It's a nice one, they're kind of tight. that. I tend to check to make sure it's level every time, which it is. It might be overkill. And then one of the things I've learned, so when I first did lap siding here, which I think was the outhouse, I, well, I was nailing in the corners of the board. So, so essentially what I was doing is I was putting first board on, nailing along the bottom of the board, then putting the second board on and nailing through the bottom of the second board into the top of the first board. That was okay for the most part, but because I was nailing close to the edges of the boards, it was, um, there were sometimes the boards would split. So what I've started doing in this woodshed build is I just face nail them uh, one line of nails right in the middle of the board. And I find that makes it much less likely to split. So. so one nail there. One here. going up like that until I get to the top and sometimes at the top I need to cut one of the pieces a little smaller and we'll see how we make it. So then when I get up to the top, all I do is I, I measure down for my one inch overlap and then I measure the distance from the trim to that one inch overlap, three and three eighths, and then I'll, I'll um, rip one piece of my siding to fit that size gap. And if everything goes well, that'll fit right in there. Perfect. 